Hello and welcome everyone to uh, teaching in your software team. Um, my name is Pim. Uh, I've always enjoyed explaining, teaching informally, uh, uh, explaining to classmates, uh, tutoring, uh, being a teaching assistant. Uh, and now I uh, get to do this at my day job at Quintor. Uh, Quintor is a, a consultancy. Uh, we help our clients uh, build and operate quality software. So you might wonder, hey, what's to teach there? Well, uh, I get to teach in several ways. Uh, most importantly, our master class where we teach young professionals um, everything that we think is essential to get a running start at our clients. Um, but I also get to uh, graduate, uh, supervise uh, graduating students um, and I get to teach every now and then uh, at a, a universities of applied science where we uh, give minors or courses uh, in things that we have a lot of experience in. So in the next 15 minutes I want to uh, take you with me and uh, talk about uh, Bloom's Taxonomy which is a framework about learning and education um, that has helped me structure some, uh, to structure some things that were somewhat intuitive to me but now this helps me put it into words and I'm going to teach you uh, how to apply this to help your team. How to identify what to learn uh, and how, how people can learn this and uh, get more competent. So Bloom's taxonomy. Um, learning starts at remembering. Um, you need to know what the subject matter is. Uh, you might want to know some definitions uh, and you need to be able to operate with them. Um, so just knowing the terms and what they uh, mean uh, is, is the start, right? Remembering the basics. Once you've mastered that, you can go to understanding. You can go to how do these pieces interact uh, and how, um, what, what is, for example, the real implementation? How does it work in the background? Uh, the more you understand, the easier it is to then apply. Um, so you can get this theoretical knowledge and you can apply it into a particular situation. Um, this is what a lot of us do all day, right? We apply our skills and we build software. Um, and then once you've done that, you might wonder, hey, but did I do this well? Um, and in order to figure that out, you want to analyze. You want to uh, make sure, hey, what are the strong and weak points of uh, my particular solution, my application of my knowledge in this context. If you get even further, you get to evaluate. Um, and this is sort of a natural step from repeatedly analyzing different uh, applications, because if you can evaluate different applications, you can also compare and contrast them. You can say, hey, what are the strong and weak points of these applications uh, when compared to each other. And finally, uh, at the top level, you get to create. You get to extend the theory uh, with new concepts. Um, and, and then, uh, of course, also apply them uh, in whatever setting you want to. So now I, I'm starting to get to you to remember, but in order to reinforce that, I'm going to give some examples and I'm going to show you how you've actually been, been using this framework for at least a day and a half. Um, in this talk, I'm trying to get you to remember, right? If you walk away knowing, oh, there's this framework, and if I, if I search PIM and DevOx and, and teaching on YouTube, you're going to find this talk, you're, you're going to get the details, right? If that's all you take away from it, I'm good. But if you go into a conference talk, you're going to expect a little bit more. Right? If someone has 50 minutes uh, to help you understand something, you really want to actually achieve that. Um, so in conference talks, generally speakers will try to help you to le a level of understanding rather than just absorbing raw facts and, and leaving it at that. Um, if you were here on Monday or Tuesday, you might have done a hands-on lab, right? And this is something um, that we do at Quintor often as well. Two hours, three hours is enough 
to help people get to understanding first with a short talk and then apply this knowledge, uh, use a tutorial, uh, get your first, uh, first application going. Uh, that's what you want to be doing uh, and, and that's how you learn to apply. And then also during this conference, there are deep dive sessions and they get you to these top levels. Um, what you'll find is that it's kind of hard to get from zero to these even within a day. So what, what's often the case is that these are the sessions that have some prerequisites, right? You know how to program Java. We're going to do a deep dive in uh, how it's compiled to bytecode and what implications it has, right? If you get to this level, you can uh, analyze and evaluate your code at a, a much higher level than you could before. So this is the abstract part, right? So I've set the framework, and now I'm actually also gonna show you a little bit how you could apply this in practice. Hi. How do you want to help your team? And in order to do that, you need to figure out two things. Um, you want to figure out what should we be teaching or what should we be learning, um, and how are we gonna do that? So in order to figure out what to teach. Um, I've set up a little matrix um, of skills that people are laughing or paying good attention and being very, very alert today. Um, I put in skills um, and the team members. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, assess each team member on skills that we need to successfully complete this project. So if you look at Java, um, Neo and Trinity are doing fine at this. Morpheus has still something to learn. Um, but, you know, uh, this is fine, right? If you have two people who are, are capable at this, um, and then, then you're, you're in a totally fine position and uh, you don't necessarily need to um, learn, or at least I, I would argue it's not the highest priority. Um, this team also needs machine learning. And as it turns out, Neo and Trinity are so-so are at this, but Morpheus, he knows all the ins and outs. Um, so if Morpheus has to leave the team for some unexpected reason, um, you know, it, it's, it's gonna be a problem. So in this case, uh, we want Neo or Trinity to learn, and we want Morpheus to help them do it, right? So you wanna talk with each other. So um, Morpheus can um, facilitate this process and be the teacher in this case. Um, and maybe Neo or Trinity or both can learn. And for our final skill, this project needs Kubernetes. Um, and well, most people, I hope, agree, um, no one really understands Kubernetes. Um, so this, this holds for our team as well, right? They, they grasp the basics a little bit, but they don't really feel that confident. And this is the point where uh, you need to find help, right? So you can try to hire a new developer with this skill. Um, you can send your, your current team to some external training, um, or you can uh, hire a quality consultancy like Quinter to help you build this and also teach your team. So now we know what we want to learn. And now the question is, how are we gonna teach this? Because maybe Morpheus knows about machine learning, but he doesn't know how to teach. And what I want to do is I wanna give you examples at the hand of the field of quality software development, right? It's important in these cases to uh, sketch a context and to make sure uh, that, that you're talking about the same thing. And in this case, I think the examples here will show that not only can you do this when you get back from the conference, you can even do this just normally during your Scrum process uh, without too much interruption to day for day-to-day -day business. Um, so if we want to get someone from zero to remember, you've seen me do this, summarize, right? I'm, I didn't tell you all the ins and outs of Bloom's taxonomy. I listed the levels and gave some examples, that's it summarize the information and present it. Um, that gets you to remember. Then to get from remembering to understanding, you need to explain. Um, secretly, I've been dipping my toe in this, right? I've ex explained 
what the underlying meaning behind these words is. Um, and these two items in just your regular day-to-day, -day, um, you can just do this, just plan a session and do knowledge transfer, right? If someone has figured out a particular SDK uh, or a new technology, have them do like a, a half an hour session just to, to talk the others through what they've encountered. Then applying, we do this all day, right? These are user stories. But what you may, may, might find in your team is that the people who are at evaluate, create level, they're going to pick up the stories. You don't want that. So what you want to do is you want to give these stories that you want your people to grow in, uh, and you're going to give them to people who understand, right? Who are the, at this level too. And they are ready to start applying. So that's where you want to be. Um, then. If you want to be real effective at this, do pair programming with one caveat, um, the junior should be driving, right? So the person who needs to learn is hands at the keyboard. The senior, the, the person who knows this stuff, uh, they're backseating and giving hints and thinking about the big picture, right? That's very important if you're at this level. You can oversee bigger consequences that the junior doesn't. So you get more quality software and your junior gets to learn to apply this. And if we talk and think about analyzing, um, then yeah, we're going to actually end up at something we already do as well, at least hopefully you do too, right? Code review. Code review is analysis. You're going to look at the solution and you're going to assess what are the strong points, what are the weak points. Um, maybe this we could improve in the future, uh, this we need to improve now before we merge it. That's code review. And if you want to then move to evaluate, that's only a repetition, right? So if you keep reviewing, um, you're going to be able to, at some point, um, see the patterns. And what I think the biggest difference is between a junior developer doing uh, a code review and a senior doing it is that the senior will be able to evaluate solutions against unimplemented ones. So they can, in their mind, say, okay, what if you took this approach? What would then be the result? And then compare and contrast these two. Uh, and this is really a different level, and that's why they're at different levels in this hierarchy. And finally, um, if you want to really create, and in this context, this might be slightly controversial, but I'm going to say that architecting, right, or making a green free, greenfield uh, application is um, for a large part where you can show that you really end-to-end uh, -end master uh, building quality software. So depending on the context, you might want to change around stuff in here a little bit. Uh, but I think these steps that I just outlined are something that you could and you should be doing all the time and, and just integrate this into your process, right? If, if you have knowledge that can be spread, do it. It makes you a more balanced team, uh, a more effective team. So that's what that was all for today. Um, thank you for your attention. <laughs>